Good morning and welcome to Legacy Club's CBD, the controversial science event. Uh, my name is Chris Caffrey, I'm the founder of Legacy Club. Uh, I'd just like to give a warm welcome to Matt and to Russell, the, the founders of Chloris and CBD Performance. You'll hear from them in a moment. Just to give you a bit of background of what the event is going to uh, contain today, it's, we're just going to discuss uh, the various industri industry uh, specifics around CBD uh, and particularly around the two businesses that these gentlemen are running. Uh, just to dig a little bit deeper into why there's a bit of negativity around the sector. Is it a lack of understanding? Is there a lack of knowledge from uh, the consumer and for, at government level even? Uh, so I'm going to kick off with a, a quite a simple question for the guys, which is to tell us a bit about their companies, how they got into the business and into the particular sector and working with CBD. I'm going to ask you first, Matt, if I may, and welcome. Thanks very much. Thanks for uh, putting this on, Chris. I really appreciate um, being here. Um, so I guess a little bit about Chloris. So we're a, a, a natural health and wellness focused company. Um, we are um, about sort of harnessing the, the healing power of nature and um, CBD and cannabis is the sort of the primary um, plant that we work with at the moment, um, but by all means not, not the only one, but the one we're probably most, most uh, well known for. And we've been uh, going since 2018, but we actually launched the public in 2019. Um, primarily, um, our, our focus is on um, topical products. We do a couple of ingestible um, products, but our, our, the range that we're most known for is um, things like our, our face oil and our CBD balm and, and bathing products. Um, but yeah, we're all about um, natural health and wellness and with a big um, focus on sustainability as well. So um, everything we do has to be um, science led, but also with a, a minimal impact on the environment and as much as possible using uh, natural ingredients, recyclable or, or recycled materials as well. How did you come to to, to launch Chloris? Where, where did getting into this sector come from? Uh, it was a, a bit of a, a, a strange route. So my background is in, um, I ran a, a marketing technology software company, which uh, I sold and then moved to Australia and, and started an agency in the direct-to-consumer e-commerce space. Um, but I'd always wanted to get into to running a, a brand um, myself and I was actually back in the UK uh, visiting a couple of, of old friends and this was in um, early 2018 and somehow the, the topic got on to, to CBD and um, my friends were actually both um, avid users of it for various different reasons and um, I was looking for a uh, something that would help my, my father he had a, a neuropathic um, sort of nerve issue and was really keen to avoid opioids um, and um, any of the, the other sort of synthetic sort of nasty painkillers. And my friend suggested that he tried uh, CBD and they'd been working on some ideas and they'd been working on a formula for this this balm. Um, and the, the brother of, of my friend is a, a very prominent uh, Cambridge plant scientist. And they gave me a, a sample to try. I gave it to my, my father, who's actually quite quite cynical about these things. And within a couple of days, he rang me and just said, what, what is this? It's changed my life. This is the only thing that, that has worked for me. It, it's amazing. Um, and that that <laughs> immediately piqued my interests. And, and my friends said to me, look, well, we've got the science side of it down. We like we know how to make this stuff and where to get it from. What we don't know is how to, to uh, build a brand in this space. And we don't know how to, to raise finance and run the business. Um, and um it was a, that was a it was obviously meant to be because i was like well those are the bits that that i can help with um and originally i came on board as a, a seed investor and then within about six months it was clear that this was really going to gonna go somewhere so i actually moved back from australia to work on this full time um and now the three of us are um yeah uh running the business and it, it all sort of grew from there it's it's quite a brilliant way of doing it. It's actually should be the, what we consider the traditional route. Consumer becomes producer. You know, you try something, you love it, you want to create it. So yeah, I like that. So credit to you, Matt. Uh, hello, Russell, and welcome to Legacy Club. Can you give us a little bit about uh, CBD performance, how you got into it, and what types of products uh, you. Produce. Yeah, morning, Chris. Morning, all. Um, so yeah, CBD products. Um, much more of a, a sports focus i guess and a health and well-being focus um just primarily from both of uh, our backgrounds so how do we get into it um the other co-founder simon church a former professional footballer he 
um, unfortunately had to retire early from playing. Um, and we were doing various or involved in various projects within the football world um, at the time. And we were sort of having a meeting about one of those projects. And I have a little magical black book, which has all my marvellous and wonderful ideas in. And um, I opened the page and it just said CBD and sport. And uh, Simon said, what's that for? And I said, oh, sort of having a look at the CBD space. I was, it was becoming more and more talked about. And I wasn't aware of this, but Simon had used CBD in his yard, in his last um, year of playing. And um, he said it was incredible. He'd never experienced anything like it. And likewise, to what Matt was saying, it was very much, he was heavily um, reliant on painkillers and opioids. And CBD actually got him off those painkillers and... Um, he said it's very similar it's it's something he'd never experienced before with his pain relief and so Simon's got arthritis in his hips so obviously movement while playing and training was was very very difficult and obviously in the end he unfortunately had to retire early but so that it sort of started from there and we looked into it we spent probably six months researching the area the space because for both of us in all honesty CBD was, was was very new and you know we had to be sure that we knew what we were looking into and the science behind it and it all sort of made sense and with Simon's experience in it and what he'd actually um, sort of felt and then I obviously tried it myself and we just saw a massive space within the sports within the sporting world and we could see the potential within that from a recovery point of view from a you know natural anti-inflammatory point of view and yeah it's sort of um, gone from there really so um most of our products are um, ingestible so we have the oils um, we have the cbd infused protein powder um so it's just for us about creating a different a different kind of brand a different kind of product range to what was out there um and yeah it's gone 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 well so far obviously as we'll probably delve into a bit deeper with matt as well the the um difficult parts of the industry and um lack of uh, knowledge lack of um you know there are a lot of hurdles that, that, that we've had to jump through so far and there will be more a, a, along the way but the industry is opening up people are a lot more receptive to it yes uh, there is still a stigma there the, the the sort of stigma around the industry was a lot bigger when when we first got into it and i'm sure matt would matt would say the same but you know that is sort of lo- loosening off which is great and people are realizing you know there are huge, huge benefits to this. Um, so yeah, that's sort of a, a, a brief overview of, of, of CBD performance and what what we're all, all about. Thank you, Russell. Well, I'll stick with you if that's okay, given that you brought up the subject. So what, what are the most common challenges that you as a business are facing in your sector? Um, I mean, in the early days, it was, you know, as any business needs, a payment merchant gate, <laughs> even that, it was, you know, n- nobody would want to, um or well, there were very very few companies that would be accepting um cbd as, as as a business to accept payment so that was one of the early ones and it was like wow okay this is um this is uh, interesting so you know there was things as payment merchants there was you know a whole array of um hurdles along the side of the regulation and you know it, it was we knew what 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 we were sort of providing and the products that we were creating were 100% legal and you know we've done the testing we've got everything that that we needed but even that it wasn't enough for some for some parts of the um, industry so every step of the way to, to sort of building building the business there was some form of hurdle that we had to jump through um did, like did I said, you have the same experiences Matt then were, were you getting the same challenges and did it put you off starting the business yeah would it be like oh this is just too much hassle there's too much regulation in the way um uh yes we definitely saw the same challenges um perversely no i I like those challenges and regulation because it it helps you build a bit of a moat if you can overcome them um most people will look at uh, yeah an industry like that and just be like no it's it's too much hassle so um no i I like those ones (laughs) i like i like the challenge um but yeah there there was there's a, a lot of those issues still present and a lot of them are uh, generally, they're, they're unintended consequences of, of poorly written legislation from years ago. So the, the reason most banks um, don't like dealing with this or credit card companies don't like dealing with this is because um, uh, cannabis derived products are still federally illegal in the US at the moment until they pass the next next wave of legislation. And ultimately, most credit card companies um, do their clearing 
in the US and so move money on a federal level. And so they don't want to touch um, clearing cannabis payments in any kind, regardless of how legal it is, because there's a chance that someone in the US will kick up a fuss that they're um, doing something that is technically federally illegal and they're not willing to risk their banking licenses on a relatively small sector. And so it's 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 things like that and consequences like that. And that there's, there's instances that in the UK, um, it, it blows in weird ways. So um, as a consequence of legislation against um, uh, THC and and the um, what people traditionally think of as cannabis and getting stoned in, in the UK, the hemp flower is considered a, a banned substance in the UK. As a consequence of that, like you can get a license to farm hemp in the UK, but you can't get a license to extract CBD in the UK. Um, so the industry here is left. Um, you basically can't farm it here yet until they change legislation, which I think is coming, but it's um, it's taking a while. Um, you have these ridiculous. Um, sort of barriers in in the way of what is otherwise a, a perfectly legal industry. So would, would you say there's still a lot of neg- negativity and skepticism around the industry? And, you know, and where's that negativity coming from? Is it the consumer or is it, you know, is it above that? Is it governmental? I, d- I wouldn't even say it, it's negativity as such. I think it's just general confusion. Um, certainly on the consumer side, we've, we've seen an overwhelmingly positive response, even going into to areas where we were not expecting to get a, a, a significantly positive response. So one of, one of the first um, non-ingestible products we went into was the, was the sort of more cosmetics um, line um, with our, our, our face oil products. And we we went to a few um, back, in the, back in the time when you could do events and shows and we started taking this out to the public and we went to, um, I remember the, the Stella Live show, um, in London and taking this into a very sort of cosmetics um, sort of beauty focused audience. And we were expecting a lot of pushback about the fact that we were using cannabis in the products and it couldn't have been further from the truth. Like the, the response was was amazing. We had no no negativity from the consumer side, just a lot of interest and wanting to understand about it. Um, I think a lot of the, the hurdles that we see are really as a consequence of, of decades old legislation that's just not fit for purpose anymore. So there are lots of areas that CBD has been attributed to help uh, for from healthcare to well-being. Um, Russell, what would you say are the major uh, positives that CBD produces for an individual, whether it's a sporting athlete or whether it's just a, an average person that doesn't do any sport but has back pains, for example? What, where, where's that uh, that ailment coming from, and what what's CBD doing to to prevent that? Yeah, I think I've, I'll go off sort of consumer feedback mainly from that um and it's been quite um it's it's, it's extremely um uh, rewarding I'd, I'd say to to get the consistent feedback and that is um the main ones that we get are um huge improvement in sleep which obviously if you're having a good night's sleep genuinely that improves your everyday life and um that's something that i i can speak of personally that's the biggest thing i've i've sort of noticed is putting myself into the, the sort of deepest sleep um recovery so we we do a muscle gel we have a lot of footballers and um sportsmen take or use use a muscle gel and you know knees ankles um obviously the the uh, main um pro- problem areas for, for for those for those sports and people can't believe it they've you know we get fit we, we have a play and it's really really bad ankles and he said i've never been able to strike a ball as cleanly in in years and um you know we have players that have used that gel on on their knees and you know they've just they <laughs> it's it's funny they, they they think it's some sort of magic magic potion because you know they've they've used things in the past that whether that would just be painkillers and they said it i've literally never experienced anything like it and they're asking what what's in it, and it's like, well, it's 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 um it's uh, CBD, and this is why we're so passionate about getting it out there because, you know, you mentioned earlier about was there times where you just want to, you know, there's too many hurdles. Well, no, there's not, and similarly to Matt, it's it's one of those where you know we we believe so passionately about the ingredient, and if it was another industry, maybe you'd think, you know, what there's there's too many hurdles on this, there's too many regulations, but it's. It's, it's it's more of a driver for us just to keep keep plugging away and it has been a driver to keep plugging away and um reduce the stigma around it but the other one that we get is um 
uh, arthritis. We have a lot of consumers stuff with our arthritis, and that's that's the sort of questions we get. And again, it's a massive plus for us when we get the feedback to say, you know, I've I've tried everything. I've tried everything before, and since using your CBD, I've 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 never felt better. So those are the three sort of main areas. And um, yeah, just touching on your previous question as well to Matt for for me it's um a huge lack of education around around cbd and what's you know looking at the endocannabinoid system we spent a lot of time doing doing the research on the on on the science of cbd and um yeah there's a there's a huge lack of education and that's again what we're trying to drive out there and put into the general public and the consumers and um i think the more that that, that that does get out there and people are doing fantastic things around that and the more research that that sort of can be done it will really help to op- open up the whole cbd industry to um more and more people matt you touched on the uh, sustainability of the sector earlier on and, and the things that chloris do does the industry have a part to play in the sustainability and, and how do you implement that with your own business and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, looking at it, I think every business in every industry has a has a, a an important role to play in that. Now, um, we we really built that in from the ground up. So all of our um, everything from our, our packaging to our supply chain. So um, we work with all of our our um, manufacturing partners to make sure there's no plastic used where unless it's absolutely necessary. So the only places we use it are where we've got to have tamper evident seals and things or where for stability purposes like we can't use um other substances um and yeah really it's looking at everything so we um even down to the the actual design of our products so um we we have a a small bathing range of um sort of bath products and we redesigned all of those um about six months ago um to actually just it was as simple as changing the shape so that we could actually be more efficient in the way we package them um but that also reduced um uh, damage in transit it reduced the, the amount of uh, storage space um, they required and we were able to use 100 percent sustainable packaging on there so they actually you know they need to be sealed from moisture but we could actually use cellulose wrapping in that which is, is biodegradable and we could use um, recycled boxes for it and we just picked up the Mary Claire sustainability award for that um, and it wasn't anything like it wasn't that's not rocket science that's just sort of we looked at the product and went well how can we make this better and how can we how can we make it more efficient throughout the, the supply chain and we try and do that with every every element of, of what we do from you know labeling right the way right the way through even to as simple as our warehouse like we're using um, boxes and things wherever they can so um, be that for shipping out our wholesale orders um, or, or just being efficient with the way that we do things to try and make um, everything have as small a footprint as possible from what about the extraction side of things going right back to to the, the very beginning of the chain from the extraction is that does that have a big impact um i think it's not a, as a, a huge impact um in the cycle there are definitely um the the, the great thing about hemp is it's remarkably easy to grow um and it's um if it's um outdoor grown then it's it's particularly um efficient i think um there is going to be a growing uh awareness in the supply chain of there are there are some places where um you know th- there's been a big rush to, to create huge growing facilities um under glass and in areas where it's not necessarily going to be the most efficient place to grow so you look at you've got big swathes of of um canada and the like where they're, they're growing and they have to heat these greenhouses and, and do things in a relatively inefficient way that's not talked about that much in the industry um at the moment but i think you're going to see uh, things like that coming more to the fore because you've also got other places like like Portugal or the Sotho and, and things which are, are much more geared to be able to do um, outdoor grows or sort of unassisted greenhouse grows and can be a lot more efficient. Thank you Matt. Russell as your ideal customer I guess would be someone uh, in sport or a retired athlete or current pro were there any sort of pushbacks within the sporting world with using these types of products? You know, was there a, a bit of a concern that actually um, these might not go down too well with testing or they, they might look at it like, yeah, they frown upon it. And would you be looking for, for sport to be uh, promoting this sector a bit more? Yes, um, there have been pushbacks. Um, and to be honest, there, there still are from certain areas. Um, but you know, WADA removed um, CBD in 2018, so that was a huge turning point for the for the sporting landscape. Uh, so that's the World Anti-Doping Authority. Um, so you know, that then 
uh, I mean, the American sports go off that more than most U, uh, UK sports, but that then opened it up. So, you know, the likes of UFC, the more recently the NFL, they're, they're really pushing CBD and, you know, the NFL in particular putting um, millions into into the research around it. So um, that's that's obviously pleasing to hear. And um, from the UK point of view, which is where our, our large focus is, um, we've been sort of pushing it, pushing it with clubs, pushing it with um, national bodies. And yeah, they, they are becoming a lot more receptive to it because there is um, more work being done with the research side across, across in the States. And they can sort of look at that and say, okay, um, but yeah, talking to physios, head of medical um, at various clubs, and sort of um, with the with the players themselves as well. It's um, there are the last few months. It, it's really, really opened up, and we're obviously pushing that because, well, primarily we see a huge benefit for those elite athletes, and not just the elite athletes, the you sort of regular gym goers, your people with the active lifestyle. It's um, we, we we we're really trying to push 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 that message that CBD can be a huge part of their of their routine and huge part of their lifestyle. So, yeah, it, it is like the whole industry it is opening up, um, which is obviously really really pleasing for us. If we look at the uh, CBD industry as a whole and actually where say venture capital money is going at the moment, there's hundreds of millions going into this particular sector. And it absolutely could be more. Have either of you had external investment today? You know, not necessarily from your partners, so outside investment. Uh, yeah, we we finished a we did a small crowdfund um, raise on Cedars, um, which we we closed uh, about three weeks ago. Um, and yeah, that that we were we were oversubscribed on there. That was uh, that was our first step into to external funding. So we raised about three uh, was it three hundred thirty thousand at about six point one million valuation on that just as a, a sort of um a toe in the water and because we wanted to, um we had a lot of customers inquire about whether they could invest and so this was our first sort of firm foray into sort of uh, opening that up and, and really sort of letting the community get involved so would that then now lead you to maybe look at sort of uh post seed funding uh, series a and maybe looking at speaking to a vc or a private equity house and actually putting something like this on the table because ordinarily Five years ago, this would have been a much different proposition uh, that probably wouldn't have even got much of a look. Yeah, I think if you look at a few years ago, a lot of the money was going into the, the grow operations and the extraction operations, um, and that's that's rapidly become relatively commoditized. So I think the the future now is, is going to be more in the, the, the science and formulation and the, the consumer brand side. That's the side that is still um, yet to be properly cracked. Russell, what about yourselves? Have you had external investment to date? Um, aside from early sort of shareholder funds, no. Um, we've been approached by a couple of um, larger companies, but as, as, as at, at the moment, no. We're sort of focusing on on driving it ourselves. Still, will that be? Will that change in the future potentially? But um, yeah, at the moment, we're just sort of pushing uh, from in house. So yeah. No, but, no, but I, you, I think I think if you, if you look at the industry as a whole, that, that, that there's an awful lot of money being put into it, and there have been um, you know a lot of people looking to looking to get into the industry as well. So it's um, again from a whole industry point of view, it's a hugely positive sign, isn't it? So talking about the industry then, in terms of where it's come from to where it is now, how, how do you see the CBD market developing over the next five to ten years, Russell? Um, I see it rocketing personally. I think, you know, I think I, I speak for most brands. They've sort of had their initial challenges and um, in the first couple of years, but the acceptance that we experience every day from consumers and you know, other parts of the industry and retail, etc., it is it is only going one way. Um, and, you know, the, the, the product speaks for itself. The science speaks for itself. So I don't see any particular hurdles moving forward, and I only think it's going to it's going to explode. And the more um, sort of consumers are, are taking it, it puts pressure on the government and those sort of bodies as well to sort of look into it properly. And you know, they can they can allow it to sort of open up as well. And it's a it is a global industry, which obviously helps um, for for brands like like ourselves and, and, and Matt's as well so you know um, the target market and um, the whole industry 
I, 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 yeah, I only think in the next five to ten years there's going to be um, CBD will, will will become a huge, huge player within the health and wellbeing market. Matt. Uh, yeah, I completely agree, and I think the UK is actually um, quite well well poised to become a leader in that that space as well. Um, whilst it's taken a while to get legislation worked out, I think we're actually making good progress, and we're we're considerably further ahead of of other countries, um, like even even the US. They've they've they're making strides, but they're still it's quite complicated there because of the the federal system. Whereas here. It's been a rocky road, and, and we've, we've still got some way to go in terms of the FSA finishing the, the novel foods process, and that is going to hamper things for the, the next 12 to 18 months. I think we will see some consolidation, and we will see some brands being pulled from the market who didn't who didn't make the the cut there. But that will leave a a, a growing market with high quality products on the shelves. So before we go into the last couple of questions that I've got, I just want to open it up and say to anybody listening, if they do have any questions, please put it in the chat or the Q&A function on the right-hand side. Um, quick question for you both. So I'll start with you, Matt, is if uh, somebody was listening that wanted, was thinking about getting into this particular sector, what bit of advice would you give them, uh, one of the first things that they should be doing? Um, I think if you were looking to start a brand in this sector right now is, uh, is understand that you can't, do any ingestible products for the time being. Um, so there's this process in place with the novel foods process, and they basically put a, a moratorium on new new products being launched into the market after the 13th of February 2020 um, until they've received until the raw ingredients have received um, full authorization under this novel foods process, which is just basically saying that the product and the process used to make it are, are safe um, for human consumption. Um, and basically, until that that um, has been granted. You can't bring anything new onto the market right now. Realistically, it's going to be 12 to 18 months before anyone has that granted with the rate it's currently moving at. Um, so I would, I would say immediately forget about launching anything that people can, can eat or consume like that. You would have to focus on topical products. Russell? Yeah, I'd echo what Matt said just then. But for me, it's if you're looking to get into the industry, then do, you, do your research. Um, you know, we've spoken to a number of people that, whether that's um, contacts or but even friends, you know, they're looking um, and saying, oh, I'd love to have my own CBD brand. Well, it's a case of, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time researching the industry and just know what you're doing, basically, because it's an industry like, like no other. Um, it's not just a simple case of um, getting into, um, you know, a sports supplement game that, you know, potentially is a lot easier than just a CBD. So for me, it's um, know what you're doing quite um, quite simply. Thank you, guys. Uh, and Matt and Russell, one quick question for you both. You don't have to share, but uh, are there any uh, anything you can share with us on future partnerships or future plans with Chloris and CBD performance? Uh, we're our, our next sort of current big initiative. We're, we're rolling out a spa program. So we had one um, waiting in the wings sort of prior to the, the pandemic and that, that's now rolling out with full force. Um, so, yeah, you, you'll start seeing um, sort of chloris based uh, uh, treatments and sort of wellness um, products um, in, a, in a lot more places very soon. What about you, Russell? Um... Um, one, I'd never like to say things unless it's 100% done, but we've got some very exciting things coming in, in the in the, in the sports industry that um, I'm sure you'll you'll see very soon. But yeah, until it's signed, sealed and delivered, then it's uh, it's not a done deal for me. So yeah, but by yeah, all means, we, yeah, we've, we've got we've got a lot of things coming up within the next six months. Thank you both. I wish you best of luck with both of those. I'm going to hand the mic to James, who has a question. But if anybody else does have a question, please feel free to drop it into the chat or the Q&A. Hi, James. Morning, all. Um, great, absolutely brilliant session this morning, I just want to say. Um, I've got a question around education. It's come up a lot, sort of everyone saying, like, you know, we need to really educate in the space, um, you know, the wider society and so on. And I know that the mainstream media in the UK have a tendency to to link CBD back to, you know, the stuff that maybe I I, I sampled during my younger years and, and, and the THC-based uh, stuff. And also, you know, advertising standards, they tend to block a lot of uh, stuff. So how do you, and this is to either of you, suggest we go about, you know, really driving that education when at every turn you're almost being hampered 
um, by you know some of the powers that be. It's I, I think like the, the core of it comes um, comes down to um, like respecting the science, and so you know a lot of a lot of the, the the issues we're making claims around it are actually the same as they are for, for any product. Like you've got to have a a valid scientific base to be able to make any of these claims, and the problem with CBD and and a lot of the cannabis derived products is, is because there was the pro prohibition on, on anything cannabis for so long that trickled down into the education system as well and so there wasn't the university level research being done on these compounds now that that's now that that's been lifted it, it's happening at like a great rate but w it's still going to take a while for that to come through but what we are seeing now is that there's more and more research coming every day and and we are we do consumer trials on all of our products now as well so we can start to make soft claims around that that educate the public um but i think it's still for good reason that you can't go out there and make sort of hard claims that this will do x because it needs that body of scientific research behind it to be able to sort of publicly go out there and talk about it um i think the the confusion with thc yeah that's that's still an ongoing thing that is still probably one of the most common questions you get is is this going to get me high and again that that's about the public understanding and and Again, it comes back to you know because everyone was sort of lumping hemp and cannabis and, and marijuana into the same the same conversation when they're they're very different different mm -hmm. things, um, and and that is going to be the the key education. Do you think they're stopping you have the opportunity to to, to educate? So, because in this room here, everyone understands that, but I feel like they're blocking those opportunities to make that clear distinction. I think um, it's getting a lot better now. Like cer certainly the journalists that we've been talking to, they're all really interested in, in, in this. And you will always get those media who want to, um, who want to, you know, sort of demonize it and play that card just because it's going to get people's interest. Yeah. But I, I think that the impression we're getting anyways, the public are generally getting much more wise to that now, you know, they're starting to, to comprehend the, the difference and, and they understand that, you know, if you can go out and buy this stuff in, in boots, then um, it's probably, it's probably going to be um, going to be safe and it's not going to be getting you, you high. And that, that's definitely helping to open up the conversation now. And I, I think as, as more and more sort of reputable brands build in the space, it's just going to make it easier. Thanks. Thanks, Chris, for the opportunity. That was great. Thank you, James. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Russell. Uh, and a, a special thank you to you both for taking the time to come and speak to us today. I really, really appreciate it. I urge everybody to go and check out CloraCBD.com and CBDPerformance.com. Try the products, uh, see what all the fuss is about, and I'm sure you will be very pleased with the outcome. Thank you both, and thank you to everybody that joined us today. Uh, we have a quieter August coming up uh, because naturally people would be going away, but hopefully uh, they'll still get some sort of break. Uh, but we do have a couple of live events lined up for August and September. Uh, please do get in touch with the guys if you've got questions about their businesses, drop them a line on LinkedIn um, or come to us directly and we can connect you. But thank you again to everybody for joining us today and I wish you a wonderful week. Thanks very thank much, you, Chris. Chris. Thanks, Cheers, guys. Man.